So welcome to this lesson. Uh, this is going to be a mixed media lesson with a three quarter turn face. And I'm also going to be sharing how I worked through a challenge on this piece. So I'm just starting with adding some collage down. I find this helps uh, sort of break the ice for me with a piece. And I'm using a, a birch wood panel there. I find it um, a nice sturdy surface for adding collage to. And I'm using some fluid matte medium, just adding that down first and then smoothing it with my fingers and then with a roller, uh, just making sure I get out all the bubbles. Now I'm adding some more of that same uh, paper in another spot on the canvas. I'm not thinking too much about where I'm putting things, uh, just kind of doing it loosely and intuitively. Now I'm adding some book pages again, just randomly down on the, on the wood panel there. I didn't gesso the board ahead of time. I just, um, I like the, the look of the wood and I also like the way that the paint, uh, kind of bleeds into the wood as well, but the medium, the fluid matte medium adds a bit of a surface there to add the paint on later. I could also have used a, a clear gesso on the board too. have all the collage down I'm adding some white gesso just again kind of randomly around the the canvas there and then I'm using an old credit card to scrape the gesso around decided to use the roller just to add a little bit of different texture so just here and there and then I took a palette knife and just kind of scraped into the wet gesso just to create some more random marks Now I'm starting to draw the face. And so I'm just starting with where I want the forehead to be, where I want the chin to be, and the angles of the, the face from the reference photo that I'm using. So just making sure I got the, the angles in first and just drawing some sort of straight lines there. adding in the hairline there and then the eye line just using the same angle that's in the reference photo and then keeping the nose and the mouth angles the same and drawing down the center line that's a bit curved when it's a turned face the nose is halfway between the eyes and the chin and then the mouth is roughly halfway between the nose and the chin and I'm just double checking those measurements with my fingers. I usually like to start with the nose because a lot of the measurements of the face can be um, brought from that. And then I'm just looking at the nose uh, angle there, which I ended up not having quite the right angle. I fixed that later. So the corner of the eye comes up from the corner of the nose. And because it's a turned face, uh, this eye here is going to be bigger than the other eye. And I'm just looking where the eyebrow starts, and the angle of the eyebrow. So the other eye is kind of, because it's turned, uh, it kind of starts all the way into the nose. The part of the eye is hidden by the nose. I'm just making sure that that eye was bigger than the, 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 the eye that's further turned. I'm just sort of rounding off some of the face shapes there from the original lines. There I'm doing the philtrum, starting the lips, 
ended up moving the lips. They weren't quite in the right spot. I'd kind of put them a little too far to the right. But that's the beauty of mixed media is you can just keep uh, adjusting and the beauty of acrylic. Uh, you can just paint over what's not working. And I always like to remind people to be kind to themselves as they're creating and to enjoy themselves. I remind myself of this all the time. And with this piece, I did end up um, starting to get a little bit frustrated because it wasn't going where I wanted to. And then I had to remind myself not to be frustrated and just to uh, set it aside and just think about uh, what I wanted to do with the piece. So that second eyebrow part of it um, isn't showing because the face is turned. And a lot of it's tucked behind the hair as well. And I'm just using a HB pencil here. And I'm just checking here to make sure that I've got the angles of the eyes, nose and mouth all kind of going in the same direction. reshaping the nose, realized I didn't quite have the angle right. And that my eye wasn't quite far enough over. So I'm taking the charcoal pencil now and just darkening in all my lines. I kind of go from lightest to darkest. Uh, the next stage I'll start using a Stabilo All uh, black uh, pencil and it's even darker than the charcoal. And I like how the, the charcoal and the Stabilo All mix with the gesso later to do some shading.
using some white gesso here to mix with the stabilo and the charcoal and map in where the shadows are. So using my reference photo to see where those shadows are. I don't usually try and make my painting look like the reference, but I mostly use it for the angles of the face and also for the, the shading to see where the light uh, hits the face. So there's usually some shadow around the edges of the face. It helps show the, the curve of the face uh, in the eye sockets, um, the areas that are kind of receding and usually along the, the edge of the face, under the nose, the top lip, uh, uh, under the chin. So I'm also using a bit of clear gesso uh, so that I'm not uh, making the stabilo all uh, whiter and so, but it helps activate the stabilo.
because they have that sort of translucent quality to them. It ended up that this piece, I felt like it was too translucent. I ended up adding more of an opaque uh, layer later on the face. Uh, but here I'm using uh, Liquitex uh, Transparent Raw Sienna and I'm just adding it on top of the shadow areas. And I do believe that each layer adds interest even if you can't see it in the end. Parts of it you might be able to see. the inks here on the face I use transparent burnt sienna and transparent raw umber and I kind of move back and forth between all of all three of the inks that I had
taking some clear gel medium and I'm smearing it around with a palette knife. And this just adds another interesting layer of texture and it dries uh, clear. Then I just took my palette knife and I did some writing into the gel. And later when I add some acrylic inks on top, it kind of shows the writing a little bit more. So here I'm starting to figure out some pieces that I wanted to change on the face. So I'm, I'm pulled out my white charcoal pencil to map in where the highlights are. And I like I felt that the eyebrows weren't quite the right shape. And so I'm just using that because it's easy to blend with the paint to redraw where some of the features uh, should be.
to use uh, the one of my favorite art supplies, the old credit card. Uh, but I just started by uh, mapping or putting the paint around the face so that that part was uh, solid. And then I take the credit card and I just smear the uh, the different colors around. So I'm using the the golden heavy body raw sienna and raw umber and quinic. I, I always have trouble with the the how to say the last one. Uh, quinac quinacridone nickel azu gold, which is one of my favorite colors. So I'm just using those three, and I'm using the heavy body because it's easier to smear with the credit card. color to the background. I kept this pretty subtle. I just watered down those heavy body paints. I could have used the acrylic inks, but I didn't want to waste what I had there on my palette. So I just moved that around and added those colors in different spots around the background.
I'll share with you the the struggle that I had with this piece and what I did about it. Uh, I wasn't feeling a real connection with her, and sometimes I just kind of fall in love with the painting and feel uh, a real emotional connection. And so I was trying to figure out why that was, and so I thought about a bunch of questions I could ask myself. So first of all, did it matter uh, whether I had a connection with her or not? And did I learn something in the process? Did I enjoy myself? Uh, That's usually one of my biggest questions because that's one of my main intentions for painting is to enjoy myself. And then because I wasn't really liking her, I could, I could be bold with her and, and experiment and, and try new supplies or new things. And that's a great place to be in as well. The other thing I did was I asked for some help. So I love the online art community and I sort of put it out there, any suggestions for her and expressing that I was feeling a little bit stuck. And so many, many people suggested to set her aside and come back to her. Uh, Some said, you know, ask her what she needs and some, some specific suggestions like maybe adding some blues or some greens, uh, which would be a, a contrasting color to some of these earthy tones that I have here. So I did that. I set her aside for almost a week. And when I came back to her, I decided that I wanted to use, which my favorite technique lately is using golden open paints. And they're a heavy body, more of a heavy body paint. And I'd been using the the gesso and the acrylic inks that are very transparent. So creating a bit more of an opaque layer on her face and using the the layers that I had already uh, to map out again where the darks and lights are. I love the golden open paints because they stay wet longer and so it's easier to blend for a longer period of time. So the colors I'm using here, I've got uh, Golden Open Burnt Umber, Titan Buff, Raw Sienna, Quinacridone, Nickel Azu Gold, Titanium White, and then I didn't have any blue in the Golden Open, so I used some Cerulean Blue uh, Chroma Paint, which is a Vancouver-based company who creates some beautiful paint. Uh, You can mix the Golden Open with uh, the regular acrylics. And so just to share how I'm adding the paint, I'm starting with the darks around the edges there and uh, blending in mostly the Titan Buff to uh, lighten it and blend all the edges. And I just added the Cerulean Blue. It mixed with the uh, Raw Sienna, which was a little bit of a yellowy color, so it turned a bit green, which was fine. Uh, I ended up not really liking the the blue green color, uh, but again, it added some interesting under layer. So I just move around the face again. I usually do the forehead first. I've got a bit of a pattern. Then I go down the left side of the face, uh, then the right, and then I do some of the more detail pieces. And then I just keep going around until I feel like I have the face where I want it to be. In this layer, I also reshaped some of her features. So her eyebrow, I moved up a little bit further. It was a little too close to her eye. I also reshaped the mouth a little bit. And all of these colors uh, really warmed up the face quite a bit. So I really felt uh, more of a connection to her.
joining me with this project. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or feedback for me, please connect with me. And I hope um, you got some ideas on how to how to keep working on a piece, even if you're feeling like it's not working. It happens so often. 